I am Adil Kumar and here is another very interesting video on pre-calculus which will help you prepare for calculus. Now this time I am concentrating on advanced functions which is in itself a one semester course. I have only taken up very typical examples which will help you understand the concept and also remind you of techniques which you should practice and understand before getting into calculus. So from advanced functions I've picked up absolute functions which I find some students having difficulty with. So the question here is solve absolute function equation and inequality. So we have two examples here. The first one is an equation, the other one is an inequality. Now before getting into solving these uh, equations, let me tell you what absolute function is. So absolute function absolute x is normally defined as equal to minus x if x is greater than or equal to 0 and I'm sorry plus x and minus of x if x is less than 0 correct. The whole concept here is that if you draw a line of a graph let's say let's say this is the line graph of a line then for absolute we always have positive values. So whatever is positive remains positive. So this remains positive, right? However, whatever is negative is made positive. So it is flipped. So that is what minus means. So it is like flipped and made positive. So that is how you get absolute x function. Now this concept will be used when we solve equations and inequalities. The idea is to find zeros. And then, that is the first step, I should say step number one, and step number two is rewrite. Absolute uh, function as piecewise function. And then you solve, and then you solve. Do you see that? So, so that is what you need to follow to really solve equations or inequalities based on absolute functions. And to make it more interesting, I have taken two absolute functions. Do you see that? So I have many examples with one absolute functions. You can always search for Anil Kumar absolute function equations and two examples from there. Uh, we have very few with double absolute functions. So let's see how to do them. Well, the first one here turns out to be an inequality. Uh, let's do this first, right? So, so we'll try to do the inequality, which is absolute x minus 3 plus absolute x plus 2 is less than 13. First step is understand what is absolute x minus 3 equal to. So this function is basically written as x minus 3 if x is greater than or equal to when is it 0? It is 0 at 3. So when x is greater than or equal to 3 and it is negative of this that is minus x plus 3 when x is less than 3. Do you, do you get it? Similarly, the other function can also be defined as equal to x plus 2 when x is greater than or equal to minus 2 because minus 2 makes it 0 correct and negative of this if x is less than minus 2. Now that gives you an idea that uh, to solve such questions we have to solve it in different intervals got it. So we have to have different intervals one is from negative infinity to minus 2, the other is from minus 2 to 3, and then from 3 to infinity. So I'm going to divide this page into three portions. Right? Now, here we have an interval when x is less than minus 2, right? And then we'll have inside when x is greater than or equal to minus 2, but less than 3. And then we'll say x is greater than or equal to 3. So we got three different intervals. 
Now, based on these three intervals, we have three different equations. If x is less than minus 2, we have to take these positions, both negative, right? This also, both negative. So, we'll rewrite this equation as minus x, that becomes plus 3, plus, that becomes, I mean, minus x minus 2, less than 13. You get an idea, right? So, we rewrite these equations in their intervals. In the second interval, the f that term x plus 2 becomes positive, however, x minus 3 remains negative. So, it is minus x plus 3, and that becomes positive, it becomes plus x plus 2, mm -hmm. less than 13. And here, both become positive, as given here, without absolute sign. So, so we get this as kind of like this, 13, right? So, in each interval, you have to solve the inequality. I hope till now it's absolutely clear. Pause your video, answer these and then match your answers, right? I can do some calculation mistakes, but be sure that your answer is correct. I'm only here to teach you a method. Now, minus x minus x makes it minus 2x, plus 3 minus 2 is plus 1, and we want to see it less than 13. Bring it to the side here, so we get minus 2x is less than 13 minus 1, right? And then x is, now 13 minus 1 is 12. Let me write that first. Okay. Now here we have a number which is, uh, which is minus 2. Now in this case, if I divide by minus 2, I have changed, I have to change the sign, correct? You remember that part? So it becomes x is greater than 12 divided by minus 2. Because whenever you divide or multiply by negative sign, you have to change the sign. So that gives you that x should be greater than minus 6, right? So that gives you x should be greater than minus 6 as one of the results. Now here you're talking about x to be less than minus 2, right? So on a number line, think like this. Think like this. That is a number line for you. And uh, let's say here we have 0 and here we have minus 2 then minus 6 is somewhere there, minus 6 is somewhere here, and what we are saying here is that it is greater than minus 6, but it has to be less than minus 2, so we are looking for a solution from minus 6 to minus 2, do you get it? So that becomes a part of solution, correct? Now let's do the next one. Minus x plus x is 0, so we get 3 plus 2, which is 5, and 5 is less than 13. This is always true. So that means that on this number line, if we are taking up this solution, uh, let me write down. Let's say here if we have 0, and we are talking about interval from minus 2 to plus 3, both not included, the whole interval, this is included, right? So at present, what we can say is that here to here it is true where minus 2 is included. Do you get an idea? Now let's do the last one. If you combine you get 2x minus 3 plus 2 is minus 1 less than 13 or 2x is less than 13 plus 1 or 2x is less than 14 or x is less than 7. So in this interval which we are talking about so let's say this is 0 for us, and uh, we are looking for greater than 3, right? So the interval is greater than, this is the interval. So within this interval, what we observe is that the solution lies from 7 to, to this place, correct? Less than this. So this is included. So on the whole, we have a solution here which ranges from minus 6 to 7. Do you see that? So we have our answer, so we can write down our answer as minus 6 is not included and 7 is also not included, right? So that becomes the solution of the given inequality. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear. Remember, we have to rewrite these absolute functions as piecewise functions and then solve each inequality in respective 
uh, domain, right? So interval. And that is how you should be doing it. So I hope this process is absolutely clear. Have a good look at it and then we'll move on to the equation. Okay, so here is the equation to solve. Absolute value of 2x minus 1 minus x plus 5 absolute value equals to 3. I'd like you to pause the video, answer this question, and then look into my suggestions. The first step, as I said, is to rewrite the absolute function as, as a piecewise function. Correct? So this absolute 2x minus 1 could be written as 2x minus 1 if x is greater than or equal to what makes it 0? Half. And negative of this, that means minus 2x plus 1 when x is less than half. Got it? Similarly, for x plus 5, we could write this as x plus 5 when x is greater than or equal to minus 5 and minus of x minus of 5 when x is less than minus 5. So use greater than or equal to for positive. That will help you to, you know, uh, get the questions right always. Now, we can rewrite the question. So the question could now be written in these two intervals, right? Rather, three intervals. So in this particular case, we have again three intervals. So if you are working with two absolute functions, you expect three intervals. Now, the three intervals are minus 5. So one interval is between minus infinity to minus 5. The other one is from minus 5 to half. And then we have from half to infinity. Correct? Let's rewrite the question in these intervals. In this interval, both are negative. So we'll write this as minus 2x plus 1 and negative becomes because outside is negative right so it becomes plus x plus 5 equals to 3. Now in this interval x plus 5 becomes positive so we have but this remains negative so it is minus 2x plus 1 when you open this bracket it becomes minus x minus 5 equals to 3. The last one all are positive we have 2x minus 1 minus x minus 5 equals to 3. So let's solve. Minus 2x plus x is minus x and 1 plus 5 is 6 which is 3. Or you can say x is equal to, this time taking x this side, 3 this side. 6 minus 3 or x is equal to 3, right? So that is one solution. Now it says x is equal to 3 but it is not within this interval, right? So so we'll say it is not valid. Since it is not in this interval, I hope you're getting the point. We're checking this interval, right? And 3 is not in this interval. Therefore, it is not valid. Correct? Okay, next to the next one. Minus 2x minus x is minus 3x. Plus 1 minus 5 is minus 4 equals to 3 minus 3x equals to 3 plus 4 minus 3x equals to 7 x equals to minus 7 over 3 now minus 7 over 3 lies in this interval correct so that is a valid solution so it is valid since it lies within this interval it is valid correct now the last one here 2x minus x is x, minus 1 minus 5 is minus 6 equals to 3, so x is equals to 3 plus 6, so x is equals to 9, 9 is greater than half, so this is also a valid solution, correct? So we get two valid solutions, and our answers are, so let me write down our answers, are minus 7 over 3 and x equals to 9, so these are the values for x. So that is how you are going to solve equations and inequalities related to absolute functions. So I purposely took difficult questions based on absolute functions. If you can do these, you can do them all. And if you need some help, you can always search for my videos, Anil Kumar Absolute Functions Playlist, 
and have some practice questions. I hope that helps. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe my videos, that would be even better. Thank you and all the best.